In this video, we're going to learn how to fine tune, instruct fine tune Falcon 7 billion parameter model on the free version of Google Colab. We're going to use the tutorial that Hugging Face team has posted. So it's not my own code. Thanks to the Hugging Face team that has posted this blog post called Falcon has landed in the Hugging Face ecosystem. All these people have contributed. I've just taken their Google Colab notebook. You want to start with installing the required libraries. So the required libraries are first, we need TRL, Transformers, Accelerate, PEFT, bits and bytes, ANOPS and weights and biases. This is a notebook that's been put together by Eunice. So you can use that notebook. First, make sure that you have got the GPU enabled. I'm on the free version of Google Colab. That's why I'm using the T4 machine. If you have access to Google Colab Pro, then probably you can use a slightly powerful GPU than T4 that will make this process faster. But even if you are on T4, the basic version of Google Colab, this should ideally work completely fine for you. Most of the libraries are mandatory. If you do not want to do model monitoring or the training monitoring part while the model is being trained, you do not need to use weights and biases, but otherwise you need to use weights and biases just to see how the loss is coming down. And if you want to use anything in, in the future, for example, if you want to access artifacts or the training process, then weights and biases could be really helpful for you. Once the installation has been done, now we need to find or use the data set that we are going to use for instruct fine tuning. This should be an instruction data set, which means uh, this is one of the data sets that people have been using to fine tune large language models. So here we are using the Guanaco data set, which is a subset of open assistant data set. It has approximately 10,000 rows in the training and it is an Apache 2.0 license. So even if you train, you can use it for commercial purposes. And this is a subset of open assist. Like I said, this is like the highly rated conversations which has 9,846 data uh, samples. Now you're going to load the data set using the data sets library. After you have successfully loaded the data set, you can just check if the data set has been successfully loaded. Just like print the data set, you'll get to know what is the field inside the data set and what is the property of the data set in itself. So this, it has a text attribute. So that is the main field and it has got the number of rows, which is 9,846 rows. Once everything is done, now we are going to get into the model place where we're going to load the model first. So this is the model Falcon 7 billion sharded model. So you can see the model location. This has been put together by Eunice. So you can go there and then see the model details, all the like the entire model file is available. Specify the model name, then specify the bits and bytes, uh, bits and bytes configuration. This is important for us to do this entire thing on Google Colab Notebook. We're going to, this is basically QLora. We are going to load the quantized model first with four bit and then we're going to use the model in itself. So make sure that the quantization configuration specified and also enable trust remote coder because you're you're using Falcon, which is still not you know part of this uh, transformer ecosystem properly. Once this is all done, um, down, this downloading model process will take a little bit of time. But while it is being downloaded, once again, I would like to remind you that we are not fine tuning the entire model. We're going to fine tune the quantized version of model, which means we are downloading the model as a four bit quantized model. Then we are going to use LoRa, which is to fine tune only particular components. So which means at the end of the LoRa process, you will have the adapters in place, which you can slap or apply on top of the base model to use. So the advantages of using LoRa here is one, you're not going to spend a lot of compute in fine tuning. Second, you're also not saving the entire model, which means you're, you ultimately it's a lesser storage space uh, that final file is going to cost for you. So you're going to save on training compute and also you're going to save on the storage part. So that's why LoRa is efficient and QLoRa is multi more efficient in terms of fine tuning, primarily because you're loading the four bit quantization model. So even for somebody like me who doesn't have a GPU access can still fine tune it using free Golab, Colab version. Uh, just the configuration. The main thing here is load and forward, then the data structure type and what is the compute data structure type, the quant type and compute data structure type and everything goes inside the quantization configuration. At this point, you can see the model has been uh, downloaded. Once the model has been downloaded, then we are going to go to the next step. Just like we downloaded the model, let's download the tokenizer and set the tokenizer, the pad token. And once that is done, then uh, the next thing is we're going to get into the LoRa configuration in itself. In order to create the LoRa model, first we need to specify the LoRa configuration file. And according to the Q LoRa paper, it is important to consider 
all the linear layers in a transformer block for maximum performance. Transformers is a model architecture. These are different layers that we should ideally target with LoRa. So these are the layers that we should ideally target. But just to show you, uh, just to show the process because this is demo, I don't want to take a lot of time. I'm going to show you starting the fine tuning process only with the query key value without the other linear layers. But if you're doing this like diligently to create your own model, make sure that you have all the linear layers that are available as part of the model inside the target modules in itself. The different values of LoRa can be found in the LoRa paper, which I'll link it in the YouTube description. But generally, imagine you have got a very large deep learning model, then model, and you're going to just fine tune a part of it is what LoRa is doing. Once that is done, now we have to load the trainer. The trainer here is uh, going to be from the TRL library. It's called SFT trainer. This is different from the default transformers trainer. SFT stands for supervised fine tuning, which is what we popularly call as instruct fine tuning. So we're going to use the SFT trainer from the TRL library to do the instruct fine tuning part. And it's a very simple example that you can find from the documentation of hugging face. So once you have the instruct fine tuning that the SFT trainer, you have to first specify the training arguments, just like before LoRa model, we specified the configuration before the trainer. We need to specify the training arguments where you give the optimization, how long like you want to log, what is the learning rate, what kind of scheduler you want to use. The entire training arguments go inside um, the training arguments parameter. Now that has been used inside your trainer, the actual trainer that you are going to use from the TRL library inside the, the SFT trainer. You want to specify the first of all, you're going to specify the maximum sequence length Then uh, you're going to specify the model, which is like the base model that we use, then the data set, which is the training data set, then the PEFT configuration, then the field, which is like the right field inside the data set, the sequence length, the tokenizer and main thing is the training arguments. Once you do now, you're basically going to prepare the trainer. Like this is going to just prepare the trainer object you're not going to train at this point. This is just the preparation. Once this is done, you have to finally start the training process. And uh, before you start the training process, we also have to make one more change in the model. If you remember, we have already converted our model layers into the float 16 precision, but we are going to upcast the layer norms in float 32. This is important for a more stable training experience. So once this is done, then the next thing is we are going to change the model or upcast the model for float 32. And that is just one line of code. Once we change the layer norm to float 32, then all we have to do is go simply click train. Trainer.train will invoke or start the training process. And now you will start seeing the logs like the training loss available here. And also you will get, first of all, even before that, you will get the link of the weights and biases link where you can go see the project where you can go see the run that will help you visualize and see the artifacts and keep the artifacts for the future use. You can see the entire configuration and you can also see the runs. So how your training loss is coming down. This is something that all the machine learning engineers would love to see. So to see the training loss coming down is, is a bliss. So you can go to weights and biases and see everything. Once you go into weights and biases, you can click the overview to see the state. It's currently running and when did you start and also the collab research. So you can see the collab and the collab link and also the basic system hardware. You've got one CPU, one GPU, what is the GPU type, the Tesla T4 machine. It's also a good habit if you keep a meaningful name instead of random name that it gives like solar monkey. So you can go add the description, go add the title. So which will help you either when you share it with somebody, they would know what you have been doing or even if you are going to look at it in the future, you, it's just that, you know, having a meaningful name is always good. And you can also see the configuration. And when you see the training, you can see how long it is going to take. It is ideally going to take about like 300, sorry, three to three and a half hours uh, in time because it's a Tesla T4 machine. A lot of factors depend on it. Like the learning rate is one aspect and what, how many layers you're going to um, fine tune and uh, the main model size the fine tuning data set size, a lot of factors play in. So you can just stop the trainer at any point you want, go back, change one of these things and um, rerun it. So that's another good thing. You can always 
because you are using weights and biases for logging you can always go compare these different aspects and uh, and just whenever you make any change run everything subsequently every single cell and then come back again and then start the trainer that will help you in um, in in running the code again and then you can go back to weights and biases and then start seeing what is happening there at this point we have started the trainer again uh, which means the model has started training i have uh, done one change which is to mess up with the learning rate and that might have a huge impact in the way we are doing training um, and also overfitting and uh, convergence and all these aspects right now i'm not building a model in itself i'm just doing it for uh, showing it to you otherwise you know I, i would have to do it for 3 and 1/2 hours but the point is if you are doing it do it diligently on weights and biases you can also see all the configurations that you use so this is quite helpful for example if i'm messing it up if i'm messing up the learning rate i can go to weights and biases and then see and also it's a very important thing for your training losses to always come down i mean this is one of the basics in machine learning that if you have got training losses coming down always then it is good if it is not coming down or after a point if it is going up or if it is like ridiculously unbelievable and uh, then you need to always remember that there is something wrong that has been happening and you need to start paying attention to at what like after how many steps this has been happening or at what point this kind of change is happening have you made any mistakes with the parameter do you have to change the learning rate to optimize uh, the the training loss so these are certain nuances that you need to always pay attention when you are doing the ml training and that's one place where weights and biases can actually help you just to be completely transparent this video is not sponsored by weights and biases they wouldn't even know that i mentioned this thing because i'm mentioning it multiple times some people might think like that so like this interface like you can go see the training loss being logged you can see the uh, learning rate you can see like if you have variable learning rate this is also another place it could be really helpful for you to see or correlate the learning rate and the training loss so it's 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 quite interesting uh, it's all logged in a web application and it is also a report that is always available for you to use it in the future so you know what what was happening there and that's exactly what um, that's exactly why we are using weights and biases in this case but you don't have to use it keeping that aside this entire process will take 3 and 1/2 hours once you have uh, finished this entire process once your uh, trainer is completely trained you have like checkpoint at every checkpoint this is going to become a graph and at every checkpoint like the particularly given step you're going to see the training loss which you have already specified there and at every checkpoint while the training losses are being logged while you are seeing this on weights and biases you are also going to see the adapter the lora adapter being saved locally near google collab environment so this is going to get saved the training argument you have already specified this thing but also it gets saved in the folder that you have got locally which means it's in google collab it's very important for you to make sure that the google collab doesn't get closed and you can yeah you can see entire visualization of how it is going and uh, you can see that because i messed up with the learning rate it's uh, it doesn't converge or it's probably like overfitting because training loss of zero is completely not possible so the sft trainer like i said it saves the model files so you can go see the model files in itself if you have to download it at any point of time or if you stop the training at any point of time but otherwise usually a good practice is to completely let the training run if like i said if you are monitoring and if everything is going fine let everything run once everything is run then you go ahead and save the model and then you know distribute it download the files and distribute it let's just wait for one more step yeah the next step is also zero which means completely something wrong stop the training go see everything is fine and uh, at this point you can go ahead and then save the model using uh, the the adapter model in the current folder like or the output folder and then go ahead load the model get peft model is actually from peft uh, it seems like i have not loaded it so load that library uh, from peft import get peft model so like you see here we are not loading the entire model like the base model in itself this model the, the peft get peft model takes care of entire thing where you have got the base model and also the lora configuration top you can display the model to see the base model and also the lora or the low key adapter uh, training that you have done and uh, that's that's all available here as as an information and uh, if you're satisfied the model can be also uploaded to hugging face model hub for more details check out this blog post and also once again a big thanks to the hugging face team to, for putting together this blog post that ultimately enabled me to create this tutorial and 
I would love to hear your opinion. A lot of people have been asking me about Falcon fine tuning. So here you go. You have got Falcon fine tuning on an instruction fine tuning or uh, instruction fine tuning Falcon on a data set like Guanaco from Open Assistant. I would like to hear what you feel about it. And if you build anything interesting, please let me know in the comment section. See you in the next video. Happy prompting.